I'm Tactical Pascal, welcome to the channel, I hope this finds you safe and well. In this video I will show you how to fire radar guided missiles with the MiG-21 BIS in DCS world. Now before I actually show you how to turn the radar on uh, and get cracking with it, what I will do is cover the actual display that we're looking at here. So let me cover a few things now. So first up we have the actual radar scope itself. Um, you can see there there are two targets on the screen. Ignore the little yellow cross, that's just my cursor from the game. So let me cover uh, this as we go on. So the big bar of green you can see at the bottom, uh, that's just the surface clutter. So that's the radar detecting stuff on the ground. Not much we can do about that. Now you can barely see them, but there's two little horizontal lines uh, in between that red column in the middle. That's my target designation strobes. So I could basically move them up and down that uh, those red uh, rectangles and that's going to give me uh, the place where I can actually lock aircraft. Now the numbers uh, to the side, uh, the 10 and 20, that is range from me and at the top is 30, that's far away range. So one of those contacts is on my nose about 25 miles away, the other one is about 5 degrees from my nose and he's about 28 miles away. The numbers to the right of the red column, the 5 and 10, that is 5 degrees and 10 degrees to my right. Uh, that's pretty much how you interpret the scope. So it's the range from you, so you are where the 0 is and the 30 is 30 kilometres away as range. Now the contacts themselves there, you can see a horizontal line with a vertical bar. That means it is a enemy that is, or sorry, it means it's a contact that is above us. Uh, I'll discuss in a little while how we find out if it's friendly or enemy using IFF. Now we can do some filtering with the radar using the interferes buttons. So these are the black dials above the radar display. So I'll cover them from top left, then I'll go around clockwise. So top left is the radar jamming filter. Uh, that basically filters out radar jamming. The one next to it is the radar jamming filter, which is intermittent, so intermittently fil filters out the jamming. Next to that is the radar jamming filter, which is in passive mode. And then the top right is the radar jamming filter for weather, so it helps fil look, filter out clouds. Below that, you've got the radar reset button. That basically, any filters you have in it just resets it to factory settings, essentially. Uh, next to that is the self-test button. That's used to see if the radar is actually working. Uh, I don't think I've ever used it in DCS apart from a tutorial many, many, many moons ago. Uh, to the left of that is the low speed filter. So if you're searching for a helicopter, you can filter your radar so it's only going to detect targets that are moving at low speed. And then the bottom left is our golden button. It's our IFF button. Now later on the mission I'll show you what happens when that uh, is pressed, but when you have a contact, Press that button to make sure you're not going to shoot down a friend. Seriously, press that button. So here we are in the cockpit of our MiG-21, our trusty little fish bed. So we're just below a cloud layer here and what we're going to do is uh, engage some targets and discuss the um, IFF and the MiG. So first of all, let me pause it and show you what's out there. So ahead of us, we have a, a B-52 uh, enemy, and then we have an A-50 AWACS. So both of these are going to appear on radar. And what I'll show you is how to differentiate between the two of these on the radar, and then how to engage the B-1 by either locking up or by going into your sort of bore sight fixed beam mode. So back into the cockpit. First things first, the radar itself here. Let me zoom in on that panel. Pause track IR. There we go. So these dials here show you, um, why is that still zooming? There. That's better. Uh, these knobs here operate the radar. So this one on the left, down is off, middle is standby and up is on. Now in the standby mode, you're probably going to have about 40 minutes worth of alcohol coolant. Uh, in the on mode, you'll have about 20 minutes. So it's a good idea to fly around with it in standby. And when you get your AWACS calls uh, or your GCI telling you where they are, as you get within about 20 miles, turn your radar on, you'll be able to find them. The middle dial is the low altitude filter. So any ground clutter, you can flick that up and it will filter out the ground clutter. And then the locked beam, I'll discuss that later on. What that basically does is imagine something like the dogfight mode in the F-18 where that's that sort of bore sighted radar mode. 
So basically, whatever comes in front of you, if you put your gun sight over and lock it, or turn on the locked beam, it should lock that target. But we'll discuss that as we get closer. So what I'll do is I'll unpause. We've got our autopilot on, so we're steady and level, and I'm going to flick the radar to on. Now, we can see here uh, the green. Sorry, my face got closer to the microphone as I zoomed in. Let me zoom in with a, a different button. So the green here, that is the surface. Now, the middle bit here is where our where we can lock targets. So our, the target has to be within these bars for us to lock it. Now, this is the range from us, 0 all the way up to 30 nautical miles, or 30 kilometers, rather. And then you've got 20 and 10. And then this is 5 and 10 degrees off the nose. So that beep beep you can hear, that's my RWR, that says that the A50 has got us. So let's have a look, F10, what's our range to the B52? Uh, so we're still 28 nautical miles, so we're not in range. So what we're going to do is put our radar back to standby, and that's going to save that coolant. Weapons we're carrying for this one. We have, when I pause it, on the wings, uh, on the inner pylons, we've got two R3R radar guided missiles. That's it. That's all we're carrying. Easy peasy. So again, we're flying out, and if you're playing on the Cold War server, you don't want to kick around with your radar on all the time because it'll run out of alcohol, because alcohol uh, is used as coolant and it'll overheat, and then your radar's busted, you can't use it. So, flick it on, look for targets. Anything there? Answers no? Back to standby. It's also not going to give your emissions away, so your F5s that you'll fight against in the Cold War servers, or your F14s, they're not going to get uh, nails from you because your radar is off so you're just flying along steady so we'll bring the speed back just a little bit and then we're gonna bring radar on again searching nothing there so what I'll do is I'll fast forward the video until I actually have contacts on the radar in fact disregard there's one there so he's slightly to my right so I'm gonna turn off my autopilot and I'm gonna bank slightly to the right he says doing a massive turn. Now let me put the autopilot back on because I have both, so I'll pause it there. So we can see here we have two symbols. Now there are two aircraft, I don't know which one's which. So what we're going to do is cover the radar interferes in just a second. But we can see here they are about 25 and about 30 kilometers away from me. One is about 4 degrees right of my nose, one's about 10 degrees right of my nose. And the vertical bars above and below the horizontal line, that indicates that that target is level with me. If the vertical line was below with nothing above, it would mean it's below. And if the vertical line was above and nothing below, it would mean it's above. So what we're going to do is get our uh, radar ready to find out who's who. So all these little knobs here are called the radar interview. So it's basically filters on the radar. So the bottom right one is the reset. The top right is a weather filter. The most important one you want to work on here radar interferes IFF. So what I'll do is I'll unpause, I'll hit my IFF button and pause again. Now you can see the symbols changed. Instead of telling me that they're the same level as me, we have one equal sign and one minus sign. Now the equal sign, that means that is a friendly. Let me zoom in there. So this aircraft here is friendly. This aircraft here has had no IFF return. So we're going to assume that this one for this exercise is a hostile. So Friendly is equals, enemy is minus. Now, to lock the enemy, what I'm going to have to do is position my aircraft to put this enemy inside this bar. So I'm going to have to come slightly to the right. So I'll unpause, take off my autopilot, bank to the right, put on a little bit of power. And now we've got my radar range lock there scrolling up and down. So I'm going to put it right to the extremities. I'm going to continue a little right, a little bit of nose down. coming across to my right again as I'm getting closer target is locked now the symbology has changed a couple of things has happened so on our HUD our gun cross has gone straight over the target that means we are locked onto it and down here our radar picture itself has changed so you've got two horizontal bars two vertical bars and then a little bit in the middle so a little bit in the middle is the aircraft that we have locked onto the vertical bars are going to bring in and in and in, 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 in. They're going to basically count down towards that middle. When they get to the gap, we'll see the launch and HR button illuminate red. That means we're in launch range. Now, at the moment, nothing much is going to happen because I haven't set up my weapon. So as we track towards it, I'll cover the weapons. 
So I'm going to fly towards. So now our radar, let me pause there, our radar is tracking onto it. We have our weapons here. Now, on the weapons panel itself, oh, I pressed pause instead of stopping my track IR. Let me zoom in. There, we'll cover this weapons panel now. So, we're worried about this side of the, this, think of this as a clock face, this is what we're worried about. So pylon one and two are my inner pylons. So I know on pylon one and two, I have my R3R radar missiles loaded. So my Fox ones are on pylons one and two. If I want to fire pylon one, I select it pylon one, fire, only one missile will fire. If I put it pylon two, fire, only one missile will fire. But if I wanted to fire them both at the same time, I would fire pylon one and pylon two here. So if I wanted to fire, if I had anything on stations three and four and I put the dial here, it would fire them both at the same time, same with one, two. If you put this, this rotator dial there, it will fire both those missiles at the same time. Now at the moment, our air-to-air -air or our master mode is in air mode. Let me reset track air, there we go. So our master mode is in air, and we've got infrared missiles. Now we don't want IR because we're carrying SAR missiles, so our FOX-1. So what we're going to do is reset our track IR. We're going to pause, drop our switch down to SAR. Then we're going to look at our radar scope, so we can see the target ahead of us, target ahead of us, and there we have our ability to launch. So what I'm going to do is just fire one of the missiles, so I'll fire pylon 1 at max range, FOX 1, and then I need to support that missile all the way to the target, so I need to keep flying towards this B-52. We're going to go in, missiles tracking hopefully. Might have been too much of a turn for it actually, which is going to help us. So, the missile missed. It was too high of an angle for that missile to turn. So what we're going to do is leave the B-52 alone for now and I'll fly away. So I'm going to select Pylon 2 now and then we're going to show you how to use the locked beam mode. So, unpause, put it down to Pylon 2. Now, at the moment, I could turn towards the B-52. Where is he? There's the fella. Turn towards now. I'm going to see him in my radar in a minute, but it's going to be all confusing and things like that. So what I'm going to do is put locked beam on. And then target the thing in front of me. So to do that, I flick the lock beam switch up. I put the B-52 in the center of my HUD. And then I press the target designate button. And that locked the aircraft that was in my crosshairs at the time. So this is a great tactic if you're flying in the Cold War server. If you've snuck up on an F5, you roll it behind them. Don't turn your radar on and worry about slaving and putting in the middle. Just put on locked beam and then designate. And then that thing right in front of you is going to be ready to be engaged. Fox 1. Missile goes out. Tracking, tracking, tracking. We've still got the target locked up. And that one hit. I thought I was going to miss again. I was going to go mental there. So we've hit the B-52, let's load our guns and then go back in uh, and finish it off. But instead what I'll do is demonstrate a sneaky attack without turning the radar on to the last possible moment. Radar off and for better, better clarity uh, at the front I'm going to turn off my RSB in there so we can look ahead for the target itself. Have our cheeky little zoom there. Okay, tally one right off the nose. So what I'm going to do is put the power on and get my weapons ready. Now, I don't want to fire them both at the same time because they have a habit of crashing into each other, the missiles. So we're going to leave it on pylon one and make sure the missiles are down to SAR as we fly towards the target. So it's still off my nose now. So I'm going to fly towards it. My radar is off. But what I'm going to do is put it to locked beam so I'm ready now. So I'm going to flick that switch to the up position. And then when I turn my radar on, all I need to do is position that B-52 in front of my aircraft and lock. So I'm rolling around. He doesn't know I'm here yet. Lead that speed off just a little bit. Going to carry on rolling around. Bit of power now as I come around the corner. And then I'm going to turn my radar on in 3, 2, 1, now. And lock. Target locked, FOX 1. And then rotate my dial to pylon 2. 
second fox one. And that should be a splash on the B-52, but if not, let's load the guns. RSBN net on because it helps with lead. When comes off. That is how you use the radar with the uh, radar guided missiles in the MiG-21. I hope it helps um, fly along in the Cold War servers. There are some great missions out there, um, especially PvP. Um, stuff like Alpenwolf's Cold War stuff is absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't really have much else to say about the radar except uh, keep it off unless you need it. It's not particularly great. It's got a narrow cone and it's only got about a 30 kilometer range which isn't great. It's not like a western radar. It's not going to save you and everything. You need to work with GCI extensively in the MiG-21. But hey, that's what they're there for, to help you stay alive. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, Tactical Pascal, out!